Hey everybody, George Fennell, Steel Shield Technologies, Weapon Shield. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about what we touched on yesterday uh, or in our first video about cleaning and using Weapon Shield and we used the AR-15 as an example. Um, I mentioned a toothbrush, to use a toothbrush. I want to be a little more specific on this. And that is, make sure, if you're using a toothbrush, that it's a soft bristle toothbrush. And I find that the best ones are the ones that you've actually used and worn out. Um, I have maybe a half a dozen of them laying around the house at my different cleaning station in my armor's box. Uh, just kind of like always there. I mean, all you need to do is scrub it real good. Make sure there's no toothpaste, you know, dried on it and everything. But scrub it real good and dry it out. And you have... As a soft tooth, toothbrush, the perfect dispersing tool to put weapon shield all over your, your guns, your weapons, your gear. It'll put it on evenly and apply it in just, I guess you could say, the best uh, type of coating that I have found. Once again, this is a sponge. If you use a rag to apply it, you're just going to soak up all your good weapon shield in the rag and it's not going to be where it should be and that's on your gun. I mean, you can get it soaked enough that you'll get it on the gun, but where's most of it? Right here. You don't want that. Use a, use a toothbrush. It really works good. Um, the other thing I want to touch on, too, is uh, cleaning. We're going to talk about cleaning the 1911 here and using weapon shield on a pistol. Um, I want to do a revolver, too. A, a revolver is another good candidate for this thing right here called boar snake. Uh, you can clean your chambers and your cylinders pretty easily, uh, you know, from the breech end of the chambers and the cylinders, but your barrel, you know, in a revolver, it's kind of going to always have the obstacle of the frame in the way to try and get a cleaning rod in there. That's where these things, these boar snakes, will come in a bit more handy. Also, if you're in a hurry and you're trying to clean your bore, which is very dirty, you've been at a competition, you just want to take your weapon shield, use your solvent, spray it down in there real good, then take your leaded end of, or your heavy end of your bore snake. This is a 22 caliber, so it's not the right size, but it gives you the idea. Grab it and pull it through, and the weapon shield will basically uh, pull all that dirt and grime out on your bore snake. These things are washable, machine washable. Uh, they get so dirty you can throw it away. I keep, I keep two of them for emergencies. One I have in a plastic bag that is actually kind of like saturated with weapon shield. Not dripping wet, but it's wet. You can feel it. Very damp. And I use that for the quick clean. I'll spray it down in there and then, you know, I'll drag it through. And then I have the other one, which is my drying one. I'll just draw it through just to dry it out and, you know, we're, we're good to go. Um, the best way, though, as I've always found, is the old school way. As we touched on yesterday with a rifle, um, was going to talk today a bit about using weapon shield uh, on a bolt action rifle, but it's all the same. You guys know how to break down your weapons. If you don't, go to YouTube, figure it out. They'll show you there's plenty of demos there on how to break down the weapon and reassemble it, no matter what it is. If it's a 700 BDL, an AKM, AK-47, it doesn't matter. There's all kind of videos there. But what I'm, uh, my aim, I guess, and my objective is, is to show you how to properly use the weapon shield. As I said before, um, a lot of people weren't today, especially, um, you know, younger folks and, you know, even people in their 30s and stuff that come from families that weren't really gun friendly or their parents maybe just didn't have guns and nobody showed them the proper way until, you know, a lot of new gun owners just decided they really want to get into it. They picked up... Um, you know, the, the sport of practical shooting, IDPA, USPSA, um, even NRA Bullseye, and have gotten into it. But they need to learn the basics. So without having a mentor and people saying, well, I heard so many great things about Weapon Shield, they come to me and say, how do we use it, George? I mean, you know, what's, what's the best way? And I used to say, like, well, just like you would any other solvent or any other cleaner or any other lubricant or any other protectant, you know, and... I get the blank look, you know, like, okay, then I realize no one has shown them. So that's what I hope to do, show you how to use weapon shield. It's very, very simple and it's very, very easy. In fact, um, as we said before in the last video, the difference between these two 
is that this is just a bit more rapid and it will take out copper. This will take out copper too, but it takes a much longer time, maybe 36 hours to get it out of there. The interesting thing is once you get the, par the copper out and uh, get your bore clean, these products used to clean, whether it's the spray uh, solvent or it is the weapon shield CLP, will keep the copper from building up. It'll make every time you clean the gun easier than the last time. You will find very little debris, you'll find very little burnt powder even after a couple hundred rounds because Weapon Shield's advanced boundary film literally rejects the powder and the dirt. You know, that's, that's one, one thing we're famous for. We hear a lot about other products, fire clean, stuff like this, and people saying that's, we've been doing that for the last couple of decades. Did it with FP10 before when I had it. And now we're doing it even better with Weapon Shield. So what I'm going to do real quickly here, um, let me pull the 1911 apart and show you. Try not to lose our spring. Get the barrel. The locking lug out of here. There it is. Sometimes can be a little tight. And that's good because if they're a little tight, then they fit properly and your gun is accurized. If that was this was worn and sloppy and it just fell out of there the barrel fit on the end and to the point of return would not be accurate every time so that would uh, that would definitely affect your point of aim when we have everything broke, broken down here the first thing I always do is soak the barrel whether you're using a CLP or using the weapon shield solvent you want to basically you can use this to shoot it down squirt it down the barrel, saturate it real good, let it drip out maybe on a rag or something like that. Don't recommend doing it on your floor. Not that it's going to hurt anything, it's just, well, maybe burnt powder will. So it's not the weapon shield, but it's kind of like used oil. The oil before is non-hazardous, but after you use your oil and it's been through the whole breakdown process of your engine and everything, you then have what's called a an off-spec oil. It's not toxic. Technically it is, but they call it off-spec oil. So you would have an off-spec product if you sprayed it here and all your powder dripped out and you don't want that. So anyhow, after you spray it down, soak it. Either if you took a patch and used the Weapon Shield CLP, put a patch, go down, coat it real good, set it off to the side. Then proceed basically with your frame. Uh, you can take and, you know, using the CLP, using that, uh, the solvent, you can spray that in there, uh, wipe your frame out real good. You'll find that Weapon Shield makes everything just basically wipe off. You don't have to, there's no real intense scrubbing to get burnt powder off or anything like that. Once you get that all good and clean and you're satisfied with it, then take the needle oiler as we designed it. These are precision needle oilers with Weapon Shield CLP in it or Weapon Shield oil. And go down inside and hit all your major points. Hit your um, your detents, your detach, your hammer. If you want to take your grips off and go inside, uh, you can also, if you're if you're that well versed, um, pull your back strap down, which is your main spring housing, and get in there and put some on your hammer hooks and put some on your actual uh, your sear and uh, your trigger assembly because that will actually on a single action as I said before yesterday it will lighten the pull by a half to one pound and that's uh, you know, that's significant especially um, if you got like a four or five pound trigger to drop a pound off of that it's very very easy anyhow uh, proceed with that and you can go ahead make sure that you lube around your magazine uh, release button. You can lube around your trigger a little bit so that your trigger 
has uh, fully, you know, fully functional, full travel. Uh, also, all the pins around it. This has the uh, ambidextrous safety on it, and you can actually just put put a little on that, move it up and down. But you get the idea. Lubricate that very well. Then take. Uh, you can do your slide. I usually just take run a bead up this side of the, the channel and the gibs and the ways of the slide and the frame. Also put a little drop on your center channel there. Anything that has a moving part in it, like your like your um, your safety pin, your ejector pin there. Put a little drop on that, let it run down in there. Your firing pin also, it doesn't hurt. Remember, there's no solids in this, so if you get it in your firing pin and your spring mechanism, um, you don't have to worry like you do about Teflon-related products or products that have solid particulates in them. And many times, many times in many cases, we've seen uh, where PTFE or polytetrafluoroethylene, which is Teflon, that's DuPont's uh, trade name, Especially in cold weather and over time, the oils will dry out, leaving that plastic in there. And what it'll do, it can interfere with your spring, your fire, you know, and, and your firing pin. And you can have a, uh, a failure to fire, basically, depending on, you know, how dirty it is in there and how cold it is outside. Wintertime seems to be the real uh, problem, problem time for a lot of people to where they're they haven't, um, you know, cleaned their weapons or broke down the bolt, and they'll have all kind of Teflon in there, and they'll get out, and pull the trigger on that trophy buck. Nothing happens. You never have to worry about that with weapon shield. Weapon shield is good to minus 75 degrees, and upwards of 500 degrees Fahrenheit. So, uh, anyhow, going back to what we were doing here, uh, the thing to do now is after we've let that soak a little bit, take a patch and take, like yesterday, I use a phosphor bronze bore brush and I wrap it with a patch. This, um, this is a 45 ACP phosphor bronze brush. I've taken and wrapped it with uh, basically, a, well, it's a 45 and or 308 patch. And then I take and spray that down with some weapon shield solvent or weapon shield COP, whichever you prefer. The solvent just works faster. It's going to dissolve. Uh, I was explaining before. Uh, weapon shield solvent works two ways. It do it dissolves from the solvency aspect, and because there's weapon shield in it, just like the COP, the COP doesn't really dissolve it. It works itself underneath it and lifts everything out, including copper. So will the solvent. Um, it's, a, it's a surface competition that does the electrochemical ionization on the surface of the metal and to do that it has to lift off copper or anything there. That's why it takes a little time for the weapon shield to get copper out even with the solvent. There's no ammonia in this so uh, ammonia as we all know you can't leave that in your weapon uh, too long. You want to get it out of there and neutralize it um, so that it doesn't affect your base metals. Ammonia will, over time, if you leave it in there, affect and cause crazing and little bits of, uh, uh, I guess you would say, um, almost corrosion-like effect uh, on the metal surfaces, especially on chrome moly steels. Um, so this way, you've got nothing to worry about. You've got no uh, hostile volatiles or chemicals that are going to attack the surface, but they're going to lift it out and, in the solvent's case, it lifts it and dissolves it, so that's why you get kind of a quicker action both ways. But go ahead and run that patch down a couple of times and make sure, you know, you're probably going to need another one. But two patches is about all I ever get out of the, um, the system before it basically is clean. And you'll know if you get kind of a yellowish gray patch out, uh, you'll know. I gave you, uh, also I used to give a challenge to people. Um, if you think you've never used a weapon shield before and you think you have a clean gun, um, let's make sure. And the way you do that, take copies, um, whatever it is you're cleaning with, uh, it, it doesn't matter. Just use your, your standard cleaner 
and clean the gun until you know you have a clean gun. I mean, the bore is absolutely spotless. You're satisfied with it and everything. Then take a patch with weapon shield or weapon shield solvent, but just weapon shield's fine. Soak the patch and go down the bore with the patch and coat it real good. Take it, let it set overnight. The next day when you come down or whenever you go to clean that, put another wet patch on there, go down the bore, and you will be absolutely amazed at the filth that you pull out of there. And the reason is, if you, you've got, uh, people talk about metal being porous. That's not really true. Metal in is kind of like crystalline uh, in its own uh, metallurgical and physical shape. But the surface of the metals have been polished, they've been ballized, so you've got, you've got pretty, really, um, pretty good surfaces in there. The problem always gets in the lands. You know, we have rifling in there, the rifling lands, and you have the floor of the lands as well as the surface of the lands. In between each land there's a floor, and this causes, you know, the bullet to spin and gives you your accuracy. You get buildup that occurs on the floors and in these angles between the land and the floor. And this buildup will kind of like fill those cracks. And that, that can give you problems because the buildup then over time will, you know, incur further buildup. And what Weapon Shield will do is clean every bit of that out of there. It'll dissolve and lift everything out to where you thought you had a clean bore. Now, after you've cleaned it with Weapon Shield, you know you have a clean bore. You'll, like I said, you'll be amazed at the uh, amount of filth that you get out of there. But anyhow, after you're done with that, then uh, you, know, you basically coat that very well. And all your parts, your locking lug uh, or your barrel lug, along with the top here, your locking lugs on the top of the barrel, put a little bit of that. Use your brush and disperse it. It doesn't hurt to actually coat, you know, put a little bit on the barrel itself because that barrel is moving against the bushing and does require some lubrication. Otherwise, you just have metal to metal wear. <clears throat> and that's what we're famous for is uh, preventing metal to metal wear. In fact, we'll stop at deadness tracks. So after you've taken that, put your weapon back together, you've done everything properly. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now. But I'll put that together when we're done here. But hopefully this gives you a better insight in how to use weapon shield, uh, especially on your pistol. If you have a Glock, if you have a 5.7, if you have um, you know any striker fired uh, or polymer frame metal slide, it doesn't matter. Weapon shield will give you the boundary conditions that you're looking for and cause the reduction in friction. Remember what I said, weapon shield is so different from any other oil. Put a drop of it on your finger and feel it. <clears throat> then take and put a drop of your other oil. You will notice that the oil feels slimy and oily. The weapon shield feels like silk. And that is a, fa a factor of the boundary film as well as the surface spread characteristics of the oils. So um, have at it, have a good day. Thanks very much.